just go live. So we live on the, on YouTube also set apart. All right. Okay. Live on YouTube and live on Clubhouse. So we can get into it, King. All right, Kwame Asha Allah. All right, make sure everybody's sharing this room, sharing the links, right? Sharing the clubhouse. We're gonna get into the topic of water baptism. We are going to get into the topic of water baptism. Kwame Asha Allah. Gone, gone. Just let me know when you uh, need a scripture. Well, Camille, you got us on the scripture, Ak? Come, we can hear you. Yeah, and I believe they can hear you on YouTube too. Okay, Khan, I, I got you. One second. All right, if you're on the YouTube, make sure you're hitting the like, um, the like button. Also, share the stream. All right, we're gonna get into the water baptism and what it's about, all right? Make sure you hit the like button and share the stream, all right, if you're on YouTube. Also, if you're in the clubhouse, don't forget to click on the greenhouse above our head, become a member of the room. That way when we have platforms like this and build, you can be part of the conversation, all right? Also follow the brothers on stage, bringing up our wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually have the lesson first, then we're going to open the floor for questions, right? Or if people just don't agree with certain parts of the breakdown, you can always come up and ask questions, all right? Shao Paul, just let me know when you're ready. Go ahead. Go ahead. <clears throat> all right. Let me ask you a question. Can you still, can you still hear and see me right now? I can hear you, but I can't see you. You can't see me, okay. Right. You don't, you don't, I mean, you know, you could just do a visual, I mean, the voice, you know, it's no big deal because I don't have my video on. All right, so I'm, I'm going to be in and out of the screen, you know what I'm saying? Got it. But, you know, as long as you can still hear me, that's what's up, all right? Got All right, so we are discussing the salvation factor of water baptism. Right, and we're discussing what baptism is, right, in general. Right, the art of baptism is what? Cleansing yourself of sin. Khan? Khan. Right? So what we're doing right now is showing our people how to cleanse themselves of sin and what water baptism symbolizes. Is it salvific or not? Right, so uh, let's get the first uh, scripture. Let's get the Psalms. Psalms 119 and start at verse 9. Let's get Psalms 119 and start at verse 9. Psalms 119 and Shall a young man cleanse his way? So it says, hold on, hold on one second, King. It says, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways? How shall a young man cleanse his ways? Is it just washing and bathing of the skin? Because, you know, from what I've seen in the Christian church, a person get dunked in the water, a dry sinner, and come back a wet sinner. There's no real, you know, a uh, change in that person. There's no real manifestation of the light of being good. There's no real presence of the Most High God by just getting dunked into water. It's deeper than that. Read that again from the top, Ah. Uh, uh, first no. If well with all, shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto, according to thy word. According to what? Thy word. Right, you said it has to take heed to the word. Through the Psalms, David gives you what? He gives you an outlook on how to cleanse your ways. You got to take heed of the word. 
you got to take heed of the word and let the word cleanse you. The word of God cleanses you, right? We're going to get that in another Psalms, right? But read on, not Verse 10, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Let you not what? Wander from thy commandments. Right, one you should not want to wonder from the commandments, right? Because the commandments cleanse you. Read on, not thy word have I hid in my heart that I might that, not sin. That you might not what? Might not sin. And what is sin? Hold that, King. What is sin? Let's hit that first John three and four. What is sin? Because remember, how are you going to get baptized and be clean if you're still in sin? It's the sin which makes us filthy. It's the sin what pollutes us. <clears throat> we are polluted by the sin. This is what makes us dirty. This is what makes us filthy in the eyes of the Most High God, abominable in the eyes of the Most High God. It is the sin. I read that, King. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 3, and verse 4. Mm -hmm. Whosoever committeth sin transgress against the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the transgression of God's law. So when you want to cleanse yourself, you have to what? Take heed to God's commandments. Let's get another Psalms. Let's get Psalms uh, 19 and 7. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Converting what? The soul is converting the soul. The law of the Lord is perfect. It converts your soul. It cleanses you of your sins. Read on. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. And that's how you make wise the simple. Right? By having the testimony of Yahweh Bashi and Yahweh Shai. Right? That makes your soul perfect. That cleanses your soul. That makes wise the simple, keeping the laws and the faith. Con? Con, con, con. Con, real quick precept, if it's okay, um, Shao Pa. Con. Yeah, go to John 15 and 3. Con. This is the book of John. Verse now ye are clean through the word. No, we're Christ. clean. We're clean through some dirty water. Don't Read on. Which you. Right. It says, Now ye are clean through the word, right? Which I have spoken, right? Uh, unto you. So it's the word that cleanses us, right? But go ahead, uh, Shao Pao, you got it. I got a few other ones, but we're going to, I'm going to let you obviously do the primary build here. All right, go ahead, Ak. No, I'm doing the the, uh, the primary build and I'm using the Psalms, you know, uh, as my main focus, just to show Yasha Allah that, you know, uh, baptizing and cleansing yourself didn't start with John the Baptist. What he did was just, up, um, because we're gonna get into it. We're gonna get into Luke one and see what his purpose is. His purpose was to uh, uh, symbolize the coming of the Messiah and washing our people for the priesthood, because it was our customs, right, that the priests that when they entered the holy of holies they had to be clean. They had they 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 couldn't even have a spot on their garments. You know what I'm saying so, like you know, washing people. 
you know what I'm saying, and, and, and dunking them and baptizing them, that was something customary that he was doing. It wasn't salvific. Salvific is following the word of God. That's salvific. But if you follow the word of God and the, the sky crack and you ain't get a chance to have your body dumped in water, what do you think the most high God would rather? Your body dumped in water or you keeping commandments? Let's let's you know we let's you know be practical right now, people. Like us at HOI, we would baptize you. Just like us at HOI, we would uh give you a wedding and the documents that go with a wedding, but we know the consummation of marriage is sex. And and just like the consummation of marriage is sex, but wedding is a cultural part, baptizing through the word is salvific. Just dunking yourself into water is the cultural part. If I, if y'all understand me, let me get a seven 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 in the chat. Khan, on the Facebook too, hit that seven 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 if you understand. All right. Yeah, Khan. <clears throat> all praises. Let's get Psalms fifty one and verse. Uh, let's start at verse seven. Psalms fifty one and verse seven. Because this is how David wanted to cleanse himself after he sinned. After he committed adultery of Bathsheba and then sent Uriah to death for trying to like hide his sin. He tried to hide his sin by sending Uriah to death, right? But he committed adultery with Bathsheba. You know, so, you know, this is how he felt and this is how he dealt with cleansing himself. So let's get Psalms 51 to start at verse 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 7. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. You see that? It says, Purge me with hyssop. Right? If y'all look up what hyssop is, it's an herb. There's a lot of herb when people either eat it to cleanse out their inner body, or hyssop could be used in a in a bath. Like if you have a bath with hot water, if you throw hyssop in it, um, some dandelion. And other herbs in the bath, and that will cleanse you too. You know, cleanse out your pores and cleanse out your skin, right? So it says, "Purge me with hyssop." So this is a cleansing he's talking about. Khan, Khan, Khan. I read that again, King. Khan, verse seven. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be. Wither than snow, Salakia, whiter than snow. He said, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Is he talking about bleaching his skin with the cake soap? No. <laughs> right? David never bleached his skin, right? You know, in Jamaica, they'd be like, them are bleach, them are bleach. Right? No, he's not talking about that. He's talking about cleansing his inner self. Right? Because we was talking about dunking ourselves into water. He got to be talking about bleach water if it's making himself white, right? So he's not talking Khan. about physical things. He's talking about spiritual. Khan? Khan, Khan. Right? Khan. Then my bleach, then my bleach. No, that's not what David's talking about, right? Right? Read on, not. Khan, verse 8. Make me to hear joy and gladness that thy bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Read on. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Right, and this, this is how you get your iniquities blotted out. Right? It's deeper than just a physical thing. It's a spiritual cleansing. Read on. in me a clean heart O God and renew a right spirit within me right making me a clean heart O Yahweh and renew a right spirit in me so this is how you cleanse and renew your spirit through the most high God Yahweh read on God cast me not away from thy presence and take not Thy Holy Spirit from me. Right. And who said the Holy Spirit was only dealing with you in the New Testament? That is not true. Right. <clears throat> you see, King David was dealing with the Holy Spirit. 
And believe it or not, all the prophets from the beginning was dealing with the Holy Spirit. Every single one of them. Every single one of them. Included our forefather Jacob and Isaac, right? And Abraham. They was all dealing with the Holy Spirit. Khan? Khan, Khan. Right? Read on, not. Uh, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold uh -huh. me uh, with thy free spirit. Read. Then will I teach transgressors thy way and sinners he, shall be converted unto thee. You see that? He said, once I'm cleansed, then I will teach transgressors my way. I mean the way of the Most High God. Right? After, after his soul is cleansed, he said he will begin teaching. So this shows you you shouldn't even be teaching, nigga, unless you repent from your sins. Con? Right. God, God. Can't be in the midst of your sins and one to teach. Who you think you are? Creflo, cash flow, dollar? God. <laughs> right? Nah, you got to cleanse yourself, man. Jump to verse 17, huh? God. Verse 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. Right? He said he will not despise a broken spirit and a contrite heart. So you have to willingly repent and change your ways. Right? Read on. Khan, do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thy the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt you see offering, that? the whole burnt offering. So before you even make any type of sacrifices you got to cleanse yourself right with a contrite heart so um let me get isaiah 1 and 16. Uh, it's the book of isaiah chapter 1 and verse 16. wash you make you clean what did isaiah oh, say Wash you, make you clean. Oh, stop right there. Isaiah said, wash you, make you clean. Wash you, make you clean. This is what Isaiah is saying. He's saying, wash you and make you clean. How are you doing that? Are you, are you dunking yourself in the kiddie pool? Are, are you dunking yourself? In, in, in seawater next to next to uh, 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 the starfish and the jellyfish and the dirty toenails. How are you washing yourself to make you clean? You you breaking out the, the dove soap? You got the black soap? Read that part one more time, Mike. Right? Uh, wash you, make you clean. Wash you and make you clean. Read on. God, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease. Put away the evil. Put away the evil of your doings before the eyes of the Most High God. Cease to do what? Evil. Woo. Y'all hear that? This is how you wash yourself. This is how you wash yourself. You put away the evil of your doing. You cease to do evil. This is how you wash yourself. The concept of baptism isn't new. It's just that John the Baptist was also doing the symbolism in the cultural sense of it too. Khan? Khan, Khan, Khan. I read that again from the top and read it through. 
so the people could get uh, the sense. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 16. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Yeah, read on, King. God, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Right. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Right. So this is how you cleanse yourself, man. Right. This is how you cleanse yourself. John the Baptist serves his purpose, man. Right? But cleansing yourself through the word, that is nothing new. That's how you cleanse yourself. You cleanse yourself through the word. I read got a couple of precepts before I move on to Luke 1. Right. Yeah. Go to um go to Sirach 38. Sirach 38 and start at the ninth for uh ninth verse. Okay, and I'm a, I'm a year. <clears throat> My son, in thy sickness, be not negligent, but pray unto the Lord, and he will make thee whole. Read on. Leave off from sin, and order thy hands aright, and cleanse thy heart from all wickedness. Right. It says, leave off from sin, right? Because that's what you're cleansing your mind from, right? That's that cleansing it's talking about. When you're cleaning your heart, which is your mind, right? You're reframing from sins. It says, and order thy hand aright and cleanse thy heart from all wickedness, right? We know that what does that is the law, right? But um, I'm, I'm going to stop right now, and I'm going to give back to Sharpa so he can continue his... Uh, Lesson, I'm just going to bring out little precepts here and there. That's it. Kind of praises, Zach. All right, let's get, um, let's get Luke chapter one. Let's get into Luke one. Let's start, let's start from verse one. We're going, we're going to get the story. And it showed that what John the Baptist, what he was even born for, right? Which verse? Luke one and one. Oh, this is Luke, the one, verse 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order of a liberation of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the current course of Abba, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth, and they were both righteous before God, walking all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. Yes. And they, they, they no was blameless. Blame. Hold on, let's stop there, because they was blameless. They followed all the commandments and they was blameless. So John the Baptist came to the earth through two righteous parents that followed the law blamelessly. They was perfect. John, let's let's get that off rip. That John the Baptist was born off a of commandment keeping Israelites. That's right. Kept the commandments perfectly, both his mother and his father. 
So let's not even undermine that. Like the most high God didn't choose both for them because of, you know what I'm saying? You know, like if they were both sinners, do you think the most high God would have brought John the Baptist through them? Right. No way. <laughs> God. All right, so uh, read on that. Uh, verse 7 and they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren and they both were now well stricken in years and it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course according to the custom of the priest's office his lot was burned in sense when he went into the temple of the Lord and the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. Incense. And they appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said, You see that? So hold on. Hold on. Hold on one second, King. And this goes to those of you that say that you know i talk to god and blah, 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 blah. we always bring out this point just this just the sight of the angels is terrifying just the voice of the most high god is terrifying you're not hearing god if you're hearing somebody smoothly talk to you the, the presence of the angels are terrifying and those are just the messages of god a lot of y'all think y'all talking to god like like one-on-one -on -one, like that's your homie or something like only person that was ever said to do something like that was Moses in the scriptures. Other than that, like y'all not built like that, man. A perfect man, this man was sinless and blameless. And he was terrified at the sight of the angel. Read that part one more time out. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Verse 11. And the and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. God, this was the birth of John the Baptist. This was the birth of John the Baptist. This was the birth of John the Baptist, right? And now through these next verses, right, the angel's going to tell him why John the Baptist was born. Was it to start a new law saying that we had to get water baptism or we can't have no salvation? Let's see why John the Baptist was born. Read on out. Uh, verse 14 and thou shalt have joy and gladness and many shall rejoice at his birth for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord, their God, and He shall go before right, him so in the Spirit. It's it's. Hold on one second, King. Right, it said that He's gonna be filled with the Holy Spirit from birth. Like He, like that was crazy. Like being filled with the Holy Spirit from even before inside your mother's womb. That's crazy, yo. That that's that's like a major major blessing. Major. And you know why the Holy Spirit was inside of him while he was in his mother's womb? Because his mother was sinless. So all you sisters out there, y'all should really be taking notes. If you want your children to come out as great as John the Baptist, and Yahweh Shai said it himself, there was no man greater than John the Baptist. When, as he's talking about prophets among that time, but still, you know what I'm saying? If you want a man to come out of your womb like John the Baptist, not only supposed to uh, you know pick a God-fearing husband, 
because the father was a, a, a temple worker that was sinless too. But you have to, you also have to be sinless for that Holy Spirit to dwell in you so it could even dwell inside your child while your child is still inside your womb. That's heavy. That's heavy. That's like heavy, like a dump truck heavy, man. Con? Con, con, con. All right, King, read on. Verse 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elias. Elias, Swaki. <clears throat> to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know You see that? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on now. You see the reason why he was born? Right? To, to, to give the people a reason to rejoice, right? But to mostly usher in and prepare our people for the coming of the Lord. For the coming of Hamashiach Yahweh So everything he was doing was a symbolism of the birth of Yahweh and the coming of Yahweh including the water baptism. When he was washing people with the baptism, it was symbolizing for them to come get washed with the word of Yahweh It was a symbolism thing. I don't think y'all like read that verse one more time, Mike. I don't think they understand it yet. Read the reason why John the Baptist was born. Come, uh, to the general help. Do you see it? Elias. Come, uh, verse 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. You see that? So he's meant to spread the wisdom. He's meant to get the people prepared for the coming of the Most High God. Right? And he's what? To uh, um, turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to wisdom, right? Because our people, man, we are a stiff neck and rebellious and disobedient nation. So he's came, he came to what? Usher in Yahawashai. Everything he was doing was to usher in Yahawashai, including the water baptism. Let me get Luke chapter 3, verse 16. Let's get Luke 3 and 16. This is Luke chapter 3 and verse 16. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into his garner but the chaff he will burn Hello. with the fire unquenchable oh, hold on one second um can you uh, chop are you there I'm... hello yeah can hello? you hear me yeah i can hear you uh read that again from the top i got disconnected for a second Yeah, I got disconnected, y'all. It's a lot here. Go, give me Luke 3 and 16. God, this is the book of Luke, chapter 3, verse 16. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I come in, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, and with fire. You see that? Right? He said he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Right? 
so he says, I indeed baptize you with water, right? But what I'm really sent to do was get you ready for a person whose shoes I can't even able to loose. He's saying that, like, when it comes to Yahweh Shah, like, you know what I'm saying? He's much greater of a man than I am. All right, y'all following me, Khan? Let me get a, a, a 444 in the chat if y'all following what I'm saying. So John is letting you know, right, that I, I am here baptizing you with water, but Yahweh Shai, a man greater than me, who I'm getting you prepared for, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. So off the rip, right, you should see that baptism isn't just a physical thing dealing with water. Kai, if y'all get what I'm saying, y'all get what I'm saying, let me get a 444 in the chat, man. Because right there, John is telling you verbatim himself that, hey, I baptize you with water, but there's a different baptism about to happen. Kai? Kai, Kai, Kai. Matter of fact, let me uh let me get this scripture right quick. Right. Let me get Jeremiah 23 and 29. Let's get that right quick. Jeremiah 23 and 29. We're gonna go back to Luke. Come on, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23 and 29. Is not my word like as a fire? He said, What is not my word like as a fire? Say so this is, the Lord. So, this is what John the Baptist meant when he said, Fire and the Holy Ghost. He meant the word of God, right? And the spirit of God. This is what Yahweh Shai baptizes with, right? So, and if you come in the name of Yahweh Shai, this is what you're supposed to be baptizing with. Now, am I saying that you off for getting a, a, a physical water baptism? No, because that was a custom that, you know, uh, John the Baptist perpetuated and it always been our custom to wash ourselves while we enter in the holies of holies. But it's not salvific. It's not salvific. Salvation is dealing with the word of God and trusting into that. Right, read that again from the top, King. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 23 and 29 is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Right, so that is the word of the Lord, it's like a fire and it's like a hammer. Go back to Luke 3. So that verse 16 again. Um, this is the book, chapter 3. Luke, chapter 3, and verse 16. John answered, saying, Unto all, then to them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Keep going up. Yeah, John, one keep going because keep going because that that was just plain on tables. I mean, I gave a little breakdown, but just read that and keep on going. God, verse seventeen. Whose fan is in his hand, and uh -huh. he will thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather will what? The wheat into his corner. Gather the wheat into his corner. Read the shaft, but the shaft he will burn with fire unquenchable. Mm. Y'all see that? So he's talking about Yahweh Shai, huh? God. Who, ha who has the rulership? Who has the staff? Who has the scepter? We talked about that at the new moon. Khan? Khan, Khan. 
So this is talking about your high shot. Let me get a Matthew 3 and 11. Uh, so now I can, I, I got to do something real quick for my grandmother. Um, I got you. Grab that real quick, all right. Yeah, you said uh, Luke 3 and 11? No, I said Matthew 3 and 11. Oh, Matthew, Salaki King. Yeah, Khan, I got you. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11, and it reads as thus. It says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I mean, I think that's playing upon tables, right? Right, come on, come on. I mean, what, 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 else, what else do I need to say about that? This is what you know John said himself, and this was the uh, the the maker of the water baptism, or or the water baptism as we know it. You know what I'm saying? So the thing about it is, right? A lot of people they cleave on to the water baptism because it's it's easy, it's simple. The symbolism, like if I could just dunk myself in water, and then I'm saved. My dude, all I need is just to find me a, a good little river. You know what I'm saying? A fountain, a public fountain. Wait for a rainy day like today. You know what I'm saying? Our people just want the easy way out. You get what I'm saying, Ari? Con, con, con. Always wanted the easy way out, man. <clears throat> right, right. They don't want to do the work. They don't want to apply anything that they study or read. Right? They just want to shut cut. Just want to be dunked in water. And come out and be a new man, you know, but that's not how it works, right? Um, like Shao Paul is demonstrating here, right? The washing is of the word. That's what cleanses us, right? When you revert from how you did things and how you used to think, right? It wasn't the water that you sprinkled on your head that did that, right? It was an action that had to be taking place, right? You had to start implementing certain things and applying certain things in your life to cause your way of thinking to change, All right? But um, but yeah, I yield. I, yeah, you're right, King. Uh, people just want the easy way out. They never want to do no work. They don't want to apply nothing that they learn in the scriptures. They just want to hear the pastor run their mouth for three, four hours and, and just teach them a whole bunch of lies, man. But uh, you got it, King. Con, con, con. And that's what it is. Our people be wanting the easy way out. They be wanting the instant satisfaction, instant gratification, right? Instant success. This ain't this ain't no damn Roman noodles, man. This the kingdom of heaven, man. That's right. You know what I'm saying? They they want damn instant mac and cheese. They want to uh, go go to uh, um the kingdom of heaven and order like it's McDonald's. That's right. <laughs> right. You know what God. Sim God. Simply, simply just looking for the easy way out, man. Right. God. Hey, I want to touch on the fact that you, um, when you brought out Luke one and seventeen, um, where it talks about it says, "And he shall go before him in the spirit of the power of Elias." Elias, right? It says to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. It says, and. Uh, disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord, right? So John, when you read in Isaiah 40, actually, I'm going to bring that out real quick. And we're going to link it up with some other scriptures, if that's okay, real quick, shout Paul, just to give the understanding yeah, of why. Yeah, okay. Right? We're going to go to John 1, 23. We're going to go to Matthew's also, out of the mouth of Yahawashai himself, talking about this, that it was going to happen, right? So let's go to Isaiah first. Let's deal with the prophecy on that that is being talked about uh, here. But Isaiah 40, bear with me, Israel, I'm trying to do a couple of things at once. Um, Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 1, right? It all links up, okay? We're going to link it up with Malachi 2, 4 in a minute. It says, comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God, right? It says, verse 2, speak ye comfortable to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her welfare 
is accomplished. It says that her iniquity is pardoned, for she had received of the Lord hand double for all her sins. Right? This is where I'm trying to get to. This is where it was prophesied about John. And we're going to link it up in other parts in the scriptures in a second. It says, this is um, Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 3. It says, the voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert highways of God. Right? Now we're going to remember that, right? Write that down. Isaiah 40 and 3. We're going to link it up with Matthew, with um, first John, John 1 and 23. All right. Um, we're going to start at, um, let's see, where do I want to start? All right. So we start at nine, okay, to get the clarity here. Let's read in context a little bit. And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him who I doubt. So we know this is talking about John. When we read it in context, we're going to see the same words that were echoed in Isaiah 40 and, and 1 on down, uh, specifically verse 3, right? John chapter 1 and verse 23. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah, right? So we see that that's linking directly up with that. But let's go to the word of our king, Yahawashai, saying the same thing. Right. We know whatever comes out of your house, shy's mouth is law. Right. Um, then after this, I'm going to yield. There's a couple of other scriptures, but I'm going to just give you the scriptures. Y'all can get into it just to see the purpose of John. Right. And um, him paving the way and the path for your house, shy. And the whole water baptism, baptism is just a, is a symbolism thing. Not we don't we don't need it to, to obtain salvation. Now, if you want to do it. It's not a problem. There's no sin for you doing that, but you can't argue it as a point of salvation. But anyways, let me go to First John. Uh, is that what I want? Or John one and three? Slack here. All right, let's go to John one and twenty three. <clears throat> uh, no, Matthew's eleven. I want to go to the words of Christ. Hold on, Matthew's eleven, and we're gonna go to. Verse 11 is the point, right? Um, not 11, verse 10, right? All right, so we're going to start at verse 7. It says, and as they departed, Yahushai began to say unto the multitude concerning John, right? Same thing we just read. It says, what went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind, verse 8. But what went he ye out for to see a man clothed in soft remnant? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out for to see a prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. This is the words of Yahushua, right? Verse 10, the point. For this is he of whom is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way. Before D. So this is out of the mouth of Christ, right? So when people, and I wasn't around another room when we were actually talking about this, when people teach that John the Baptist was not in the truth, it offers hell, man. So basically, you teaching that someone wicked, right, was the one that paves the way for your house shy, or you just basically, and some of them are just utterly saying that he's not even in the truth at all. And we can see that he was born of parents that were perfect. Right, that he was filled with the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. Right, the Holy Spirit would not deal, would not dwell in the body that is subject to sin. Right, that is breaking God's laws. Let's prove that. Wisdom of Solomon, one and four. Right, because we just read that that John was filled with the Holy Spirit. This is why you can't let everybody teach you everything. Right, stick to the scriptures. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter one and four. Let's just prove this point. All right. If John was wicked, the Holy Spirit would not dwell in him. The, the, the spirit of understanding would depart from him. Right. Um, uh, let's let me start at three. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter one and verse three. For forward thought separates from God and his power, when it is tried, reprove it the unwise. Verse four. 
For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin, right? For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding, right? What is understanding? Is to depart from evil when you read Job 28 and 28, right? But we're not going to get into that for the sake of time. It says, and will not abide with unrighteousness, right? Coming in. So again, John the Baptist played a very important role in the scriptures. We can see that, right? He was moving in the spirit and the power of Isaiah, right? Um, but with that, I'm going to yield. Um, if there's anything else y'all probably want to bring out, or oh, um, how, where you want to go with the uh, room? I yield for now. Chopper, are you there? Yeah, I think you might have to unmute. Might be frozen again. All right. Israel, make sure you guys are sharing the room. Yeah, so quick. yeah go ahead, King. You got it. Uh, my thing is, exactly. My thing is, second. Um, uh, go, go to Ephesians. I, uh, Ephesians 5 and 25. I was agreeing that, yeah, how is Shah's back? Don't work. Con, Con, you want me to start at 25, right? I... Con, start at 25. Okay, Con, I got you, King. Yeah, you, you were chopping up a little bit. You're good. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. A lot, yeah, yeah, Shop. I think um, you're breaking up. I um, it might be because of your location where you are. Um, but yeah, we're gonna keep going until Shop. I get back. Uh, just dropped off for a second, right? Um, I'm gonna read that again Ephesians 5 and 25. It says, Husband, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church, right? It says, and gave himself for it. Um, but I think this is where Shao Paul is trying to go with it, verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Right? It says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Right? That's that washing of water. That's where. <clears throat> The symbolism of what John was doing when he was baptizing. Now, that, that was our custom, right? Even before John, people were getting baptized, right? But again, the whole point of John the Baptist being there on scene was to basically show the path, like to create a path, like we just read in Isaiah 40 and 1, uh, verse 3 to be exact, right? And in all the parts of the scriptures that links up with that prophecy of John coming to, coming to fruition. Right. And what his purpose will be, how he will turn the hearts of his people towards the most high God. Right. So by him just applying that, what he was doing, it was showing what Christ came to do for us. Right. Because what Christ is the word of God. Right. So we are being baptized by the word. That's what changes our way of thinking. That's what changes who we are. Right. Not just bumping yourself in water. I don't do nothing. You got sinners that got baptized over and over and they were still wicked. Right? They were still evil and wicked. They came out, they went in a sinner and came out double sinner. They came out worse than they were when they got in first. Right? Nobody's saying that you cannot baptize yourself and pour yourself with water. Right? But the main reason that we are, the main point of that whole thing is that it's the renewing of your mind, right? Nothing else converts you but the word, the renewing of your mind. Let's go to another scripture real quick. All right, so like in Israel, uh, Shaul Paul dropped off. He might have had a bad connection. 
but um, all praises to the most high, the work continues, okay? All right, so you back? Come on, come on. Go to Romans um, 12, start at verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable. Come on. It says, which is your reasonable service, right? Read on. Come on. And be not. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Right. It says by the renewing of your mind. When you read in um, the Old Testament where it says circumcise thy, your heart, that's what you're doing. Right. You're renewing your thoughts. You're renewing your mind, how you think, how you deal with situations, how you handle problems. Right? How are you keeping the laws of God? How are you obeying lo the laws of God? Applying um, uh, Ecclesiastes 12, 13, the whole duty of men. Right? That's what baptizes your heart and your mind, which is your mind. Right? That's what the baptism is all about. It's not about no damn dipping you in the water somewhere. Right? And you coming out worse than you went in. You understand? So, you know, when we are getting into the scriptures, when it comes to this, you got to really understand what's going on. Right. Go to Matthew's uh, uh, three. I think that's what I want. Um, start a one. Now, I'm still sticking with the point of um, the path of John uh, and the reason why he came. OK. Uh, John creating the path, yeah, I was shy, right? And the understanding that is coming from that. Well, go ahead, verse, um, chapter three and start of one. Read on. Khan, same thing, same thing we're reading here. You understand? Go to Malachi 3 and 1. Hey, Salakia. Shao Paul, you back up? Nah, nah, you good, King. You good. But um, actually, drop that, uh, Kimil. Uh, Shaw Paul, you got it. I'm going to yield. Yeah, I'm saying um, that would usually happen, I think, because of the weather. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. Or just the spirits don't want the truth to come out. Uh, but you, you, you went through Ephesians, right? To show that um, uh, how Paul agreed that Yahushua's baptism is through the word, the washing of the word. Right, but um, I'm going to have Camille read that again, then you can uh, build on it. Hey, Camille, go to Ephesians 5, start at 25, Bob, Bob Bishaw. Ephesians 5 and 25? Yeah. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 25. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church, and this is a very this is very important to know that I, us as husbands, we should love our wives like Christ loved the church. And what's the first thing Christ was set up to do with the church? Right, die for the church, sacrifice himself for the church. There should be a lot of sacrifices you do for your wife. I got it, like uh, brothers, you know. Of course, yeah, you're the head of the household, you rule over your wife, whatever. But brother, like, don't be no bully. You understand? 
If your wife is not ready in the spirit for certain things, work with her, cleanse her, and wash her through the word. Take your time with her. Be caring with her. Have mercy on her. Right? Because these are the ways that Christ teach, uh, um, you know, taught the church. This is how he treated the church. Of course, yeah, he was an all-star man. And that his disciples knew better than to mess with him. But then, you know, when his disciples were off, he rebuked them, but then also taught them why he was being rebuked. God? God, God. Right? Read on. Now, for the husband is the head. So like, husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. By the what? By the word. The washing of water by the word. Right? And, and you know, Priest Diala dropped a jewel the other day that washing and baptism is anonymous in the Greek, right? It uses the same word. If you check your strongs right now, you'll see that washing and baptism it uses the same Greek word. It's interchangeable. So we wash and cleanse ourselves through the word. The same thing King David was saying. God? Let me show you another verse too. Let me show you another verse how Paul knew that baptism isn't dunking them into water. Let's get uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, read verse 1 and 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. Let me show you how Paul cuts that. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. You know, see that? He said they were baptized unto Moses, man. Right? In the cloud and in the sea. Now, when they was in the sea, did they get dunked in the sea or did they walk through it? They walked through it, Right? I want to hear y'all in the chat. Y'all chat answer back. When when it was baptized unto Moses, did the cloud rain over them? Or they were with that cloud, a cloud by fire, which means a chariot. Or when they passed through the uh, the sea, did the sea cover them and they were baptized in the sea, or did the sea cover and drown the Egyptians? So how were they baptized unto Moses? If Moses was not dunking people in water, how was they baptized unto Moses, man? Right, read verses three and four. He's going to let you know. Uh, verse three. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Hamashiach. You see that? That rock, that spiritual food, is the word of Christ. Is the words of God. It's following the law, statutes, and commandments. That's how it was baptized unto Moses. It was the word and the law. That's what Moses gave us. This is how Moses baptized us. Give us, give us Exodus uh, 31 and 18. Let me show how Moses baptized us. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 31, and verse 18. And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communion with him upon Mount Sam Sinai, two tables of testimony. Tables of stone, written with the finger of God. Written with what? The finger of God. So, written with the finger of God, he gave us two tables of stone. He gave us the laws, statutes, and commandments. 
this is how Moses baptized us, right? All right, let me get a 777 in the chat if y'all follow. Let me get another 777 in the chat if y'all follow. How Paul was in agreement that baptizing had to deal with the word of God and the law, statutes, and commandments. Uh, I got a few more verses. Uh, and then I'm going to see if I could jump back on that stream, y'all. Uh, you still up on that, King? Oh, yeah, I'm here. I'm on it. Yeah, all you got to do is just click on that link again, and I'll bring you in. Okay. Uh, King. Khan, you said you wanted a couple more um, scriptures on that? Yeah, I'm gonna get a couple more scriptures. I'm gonna see if I can get back on the, uh, the streaming. Uh, you know, my, my perception was fucked out. Come on, come on. All right, go ahead, Deep. Then um, uh, he just brought Exodus 31 and 18. Uh, it says, Table of testimony, tables of stone written, it says, with the finger of God. Let's show that that's actually talking about the law. Um, go to uh, Exodus 30, uh, 24 and 12. Right, yeah, let's get right to the point. All right, this is the book of Exodus, chapter 24, and verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written. Right, so you see, that's the same thing we were reading in uh, Exodus 31 and 18, uh, but this just emphasizes that it is talking about the law. Right and commandments. Some people will ask about, no, that wasn't what you gave him. You know, you get all kinds of weird arguments uh, when you're dealing with certain people, man, that just have an agenda that they want to push. This is why it's so important that you study, right? Because some parts in the scripture might not give you full clarity on certain things, but when you go to all the scriptures, it shows you the same thing that was being spoken of in the last verse, right? But gets a little bit more detail. Right. And this happens a lot when you're dealing with like dark sayings, prophecies and certain breakdowns. You got to go to all the parts in the Bible to really give you understanding on what's going on. Um, but I'm just trying to kill some time because I think Shaw Pa is trying to um, get back on the live. All right. So like Israel for that little di uh, technical difficulties there. There with us. Uh, we we are we're trying to get it together on the tech side of things. OK, we can't really control a lot of what's going on. All right. So, uh, yeah. Got a little bit of echo in your background. Uh, say say something again. Hold on. Um, I got echo. I still okay. got echo. No, you no, you back. You back. Oh, okay. I think I was no. because I was far away. Okay, now you sounding uh like like you far away. Again. Okay, con. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna drop yeah, off and come back. Am I better now? Yes, you are. Okay. I think it, it might be just the app. Yeah, you sound better. You sound like you first went to the sound in the middle. All right, Khan, Khan, Salakia. Salakia, Salakia, Israel. Khan, I could, um, I could bring out these scriptures now. Khan, go ahead, Ak, you got it. I'm ready, Ak. All praises. Uh, all right, let's get the book of Acts 2 and 38. This is the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Hamashiach, for the remission of sins. For the what? For the remission of sins. And how do you really stop sinning? By keeping the law. We already discussed that. Right? Um, let's, let's line that up with uh, hold that. Let's line it up with Romans chapter uh, 6, verse 23. Romans chapter 6 and 23. Copy. Yeah. 
us the book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Hamashiach, our Lord. And now let's get six, right? And the first two verses, verses one and two. Go on. Romans chapter six, verse one. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You see that? How can we live any longer in sin? We're supposed to be dead to sin. So to have the remission of sins is to keep the law. All right, read that one more time in Acts. Man. Come on. Acts 2 and 38. Come on. This is the book of Acts, chapter 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Hamashiach, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let's get Corinthians, let's get 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. Uh, this is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12 and verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. You see that? It's a spiritual thing. Because if the baptized, it was the water, physical water, what do you drink into? You talk about drinking physical water too? Listen, I ain't trying to drink none of that baptism water y'all been using. <laughs> hey, Sal Paul, real quick, if I may. Uh, you brought uh, up Acts 2.38, right? Um, right. Um, Kimro, go down to verse 40. Uh, Is that what I want? Let me see. Yeah, go back. Uh, da, 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 da. Go to uh, 41. You there? Say that again. No, Acts two, Acts two and forty one. That's just going down from what Shao Paul brought up in two thirty eight. No, go down to forty one. Right. Can you hear me? Acts two forty one. I can hear you. Up. Acts two and forty one. This is the book of Acts chapter two and verse forty one. Made, made. Right. So hold on. It says, then they that gladly received his word were baptized. Right? Don't say anything about no water here. They received the word and became were baptized. Right? It says, read on. Right. Hey, like like Shao Pa said, three thousand. <laughs> it says souls. Well, you know, when a Christian reads that, they're gonna say, you know, people, obviously, right? Which you know that's what what it's really talking about. But I don't want to be part of that water, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? How filthy some people can be, man. But that's not the point. The point is in the first part of the actual verse. Right. It says, then they that gladly received his word were baptized. Right. So when you receive the word of God, right, you follow and trusting how was shy. That's how you get baptized. That's what changes your way of doing things, your thoughts. Right. So um, it's the word that does the cleansing. That's the point. But I yield. You got to stop. Once again. Let's go to Acts 19. Uh, you know, say Acts 19. And what is, yeah, you can start at verse 1. Let's get the sense of the whole matter. This is the book of Acts, chapter 19, and verse 1. And it came to pass that while 
and smoky, while Apollos was at Corinth. Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to, I pronounce that out, Ephesus, uh, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether they there be an Holy Ghost. What verse you And so I can get what verse you um, I'm on now three. Uh, read three again for me, King. So I can. No problem. I'm. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. What is John's baptism? The water baptism, right? Huh? Uh, uh, all right. Read on. John. Then said Paul, John barely baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on him. All right, so the purpose of John and Paul got the complete understanding. He said, listen, the baptism John was really giving you was the baptism of repentance. It wasn't about water. And you can repent so you can receive the Messiah. That was John's whole purpose that we read in Luke 1, that he prepared people to receive the Messiah. God? God, God, God. Salakia, can I bring a quick precept to link up with that? You hear me, Shalpa? Salakia, let me see if you're still here. Hey, Shalpa, um, Camille, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, you hear me now? No, I was just saying, can I bring a quick precept to link up with what you just brought in um, Acts 19 and yeah. 4? Oh, con, con, con. Yeah, I didn't hear you. But go to Mark 1 and 4. We'll just go right to the point. We'll keep it simple. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance. The baptism of what? For the baptism of repentance. Uh-huh. For the remission of sin. Right. So that was what John was preaching. Right? The baptism of repentance. What is repentance? Right? Turning away from sinful ways. That's what John was teaching. He wasn't just dipping people in water, right? And then give them the sense of what was going on. Right? Again, like we said, you can dip someone in water, but make sure you're teaching them just like John did, right? He said and said, and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. So John was teaching the truth, okay? But I, I yield, you got it, King. understanding is supposed to stop sinning right this is what John really wanted you to do he wanted he really wanted you to repent from your sins had the remission of sins right get back to the law so you can receive the Messiah plain and simple and that's what brothers do on the highways and byways all the time I tell you return to the law so you could be prepared to be a Messiah 
That's all brothers do. Like, it's not that simple. Other people want to make it difficult. Other people want to make it, you know, so deep. I can just don't get it. Like, it's, but it's really, it's really like, it's really simple. It's really plain. Right. It's really easy. Come back to the law, statutes, and commandments. So when your Messiah comes and your grace runs out, you could be ready for it. And not like one of the foolish virgins. Because remember, in Matthew 25, they talk about some of the virgins were are smart, some of them were foolish. God. You want to keep your oil so your fire can be, you know what I'm saying, so your fire can be lit. Your fire not going to be lit without the oil, which is the law of statutes and commandments. Don't be the foolish virgin. You don't want your Howard to tell you, I never knew you. Stay away from me, you worker of iniquity. What is a worker of iniquity? A person that's still in their sin. So John the Baptist had people preparing themselves for the Messiah by telling them you have to, what? Stop sinning. This is the remission of your sins. You have to stop sinning. This is what we're doing right now. You have to stop sinning because your Messiah is coming back. And when he's coming, he's judging. So we're doing the same thing. It's not, it's not difficult, people. It's really simple. It's really like, you know, your, your, your own worst enemy is you and this truth because at the end of the day, I can't condemn you. I can warn you. I can tell you if you're off or not, but I can't condemn you. Only you can condemn yourself by not following the law. Only you can condemn yourself. Me, Shao Paul, I can rebuke you. I'm a big black nigga. I'm 6'3". I probably look scary. I got a big old beard. But I can't condemn you. I can't. Only you can condemn yourself by not keeping the law. It's all on you. You ain't got nobody to blame but yourself. At the end of the day. If y'all understand me, let me get a tree, tree, tree in the chat. Let me get three trees. Let me get three trees in the chat if you understand what I'm saying. The remission of sins is on you. You got to get yourself prepared for the Messiah. Don't let no Christian pastor lie to you and say that I'm going to dump you in some water. I'm going to dump you in some damn water and now and, and you forgiven of your sins. I'm going to dump you in some water and now you, you done made it your saved. Why are you still out there sinning? Now nah, that's on you. That's not up to the Christian pastor. You got to seek out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Don't let nobody scam you out of the kingdom of heaven. Let nobody finesse you out of the kingdom of heaven because they want your damn money. Pastors nowadays getting robbed in Brooklyn because they got 400K worth of jewelry. You got to understand that's going to happen in Brooklyn. I'm from Brooklyn, man. They're going to say any up. Because what? All the riches is carnal, man. That's all carnality. That's all vanity. What you're really supposed to be doing is having a remission of sins. And being baptized by this word. God? God, God, King. Bless you with worldly things instead of flesh being bless you with the law. Now, let me get uh, a couple more scriptures, okay? Hey, what do you need, y'all? Because I'm, I'm going to go into, uh, I'm going to go into some baptism with my fire scriptures, too. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Um, Let me hear the book of uh, Luke. Book of Luke. Chapter 12, verse 49. Come on, this is the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 49. I am come to send fire on the earth. Right, is your house, God. 
Yahweh shall say, I'll come to set fire on the earth, right? Read. And what will I, if it be already kindled? Right? And it's going to be already kindled because not only the men of the Lord is going to have the word being brought out, but also, you know what I'm saying, it's going to be dis destruction and nuclear fire on the earth by the time he comes. So he's talking about the, the, the fire of the word and the fire of judgment, right? Read on. Come. But I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how am I straightened till it be accomplished? You see that? He said, I have a baptism that I must be baptized with. And now this might be accomplished, man. Right? Read on. Come. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you, nay, but rather division. Right, so this is the, baptize, the baptism that he's bringing, a baptism of what division? Why is that? Read on. Come, for from hereforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two and two against three. Right, that sound like what? Two thirds, right? Read on. Uh, the father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, and the mother in law against her daughter in law, and the daughter in law against her mother in law. Right, why is this happening? Right, because they're not agreeing. Right, some are saying we got to stop our sins. And some are saying we can stay in our sins. So this is where the division has happened. It's happening through the word. The baptism is happening through the word. It's not happening through dunking in no damn water. You know what? Come. And he said also to the people, when ye see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway he saith, there cometh a shower, and so it is. Right, it's a metaphor that's saying that the storm is coming. Right, there's going to be storm and judgment coming. We see that cloud arising, or that shower's coming. Right, before uh, Irene and I was about to head to camp today, we seen that dark cloud. It's like, hold on, it's looking like a washout. God? Oh. Read on. Hello, you there this morning, King? Come, and when ye see the south wind blow, ye say, there will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that ye do not discern the time? Right. You can, dis you can, dis you can discern the, 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 the clouds coming, you could discern the heat coming. You could discern these type of things. You should know what kind of weather is going to be if you just look up in the sky, but you don't see that the word of God is telling you something, and you should know judgment is coming if you don't follow it. God? God, God. Yeah, that's it on that. I mean, that's, I mean, to me, that was playing upon tables. That was a parable. But to me, that was that was simple enough to understand. Con, I, con, I, I mean, a lot of the scriptures that were brought out here again, and this is how we like to really build, right? Um, because some people just don't get certain. When you go into other parts of uh, the scripture, I mean, you're going into deep waters. A lot of times when we deal with Israel, you got to keep things playing on tables, things that you can actually read, right? And see what it's talking about. And that's what child Paul got into. That's what the scriptures that we brought out, right, are really plain on table scriptures. It tells you what that um uh what about what that washing is, the cleansing, that process, right? What you have to do for that to happen, right? A few scriptures were brought out, but yeah, fine. I, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to get into. Um again, we can go different angles with this, but this is really a simple way to just break that scripture down and give the understanding uh, thereof. Uh, but with that, I'm going to yield. Uh, you got a shout, Paul. Any other words you want to say or anything you want to bring out? 
No, I think that that's that's a good little uh, lesson for now. Got it. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, if anybody got any questions, open up the stage for any questions. You know what I'm saying? If anybody any questions, they want any uh, scriptures broken down. I am saying I think we covered enough for today. You know what I'm saying? But uh, if anybody have any questions, you're welcome to come on stage and put your questions in the comments. We can Con. Also, if you're on YouTube and you have any questions in regard to the uh, lesson I was brought out, you could definitely uh, make, you know, go ahead and put it on um, the uh, chat section and I can read it out. Uh, any question in regards to the water baptism, the process, what it's about, um, or any scriptures that you want us to uh, break down or give a little bit more understanding on. Or if you have a general question, you can also ask, okay? All right, that's for YouTube and also um, Clubhouse, you know the drill, you can just raise your hands up and come up and ask your question. All right, but with that, I'm gonna give for now. All right. Yeah, hey, Shao Pa. Shao Pa, you hear me? Sorry, okay. Yeah, I don't think um I don't think SOT went out today. Yeah, I think they got washed out too. Oh really? Yeah, it was, uh, it's bad. It's bad. Very bad weather today. Man. God, God. Hey, remember I was telling you it wasn't raining that bad on my end, and yeah. as soon as I started going further south, man, I saw that cloud. I said there is no way, you know, we're gonna be able to have. It was like thick. Like you could tell it's raining on that end. Yeah, God, God. Yeah, you know, all praises to, to the most high we got these other platforms because man, I ain't wanna be there out in the rain, then I get sick. Now I got the newborn here. Right, right. I be wisdom. Cry, kind, yeah. You don't wanna, you know, bring anything to the newborn. Definitely, man. Then I was thinking like with my equipment, I'm like, man, I don't play with the rain with all that stuff, man. You know. But um uh, Rob, I see uh, Rob B on YouTube. You said death, burial, and resurrection. I don't know if that's a question or you just posting that. Is that a question? Uh, you want to? You might want to word that different if if you're trying to get understanding on that process and all that. All right, well, what that's about. But um. Yeah, we're going to give Israel a couple more minutes. Again, if you guys have anything to add to the conversation or if you have any question about what was brought out or the topic or you have a different uh, scripture you want to bring out. OK, yeah, Rob. So what's your question about death, burial and resurrection? You don't have to worry that different a little bit so that way we can know, OK, this is what you're talking about. We can go dive into the scripture to answer that question. All right. Uh, quick guys, let me get a very quick sports scene of the This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 14, and verse 11. And the priest that maketh him clean shall present the man that is to be made clean, and those things before the Lord. At the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Right, so this shows that the priest could not be unclean when he's around the tabernacle of the congregation. And you know, there's other scriptures I couldn't bring out that, you know, they had to be uh, extra clean when they go into the holies of holies. A uh, priest, according to law, a priest had to even um, marry a virgin. Um, let me get uh, uh, Leviticus 21 and 13. Uh, this is the book of Leviticus, chapter 21 and verse 13. And he shall take a wife 
in her virginity. Right? So, this is how a, a priest of the Most High God, this is how serious the Most High God took the, the, the priesthood. You understand? And then now that we're under the order of Melchizedek, you know, all of us are considered the nations of kings and priests. But, you know, the, the priests that was dealing with the holies of holies, they had to have everything spotless and clean about them. So this is also what John the Baptist was doing. He was cleansing people, you know, um, you know, for the remission of sins so they could be ready for the Messiah. But the water is just a symbolism. The real way to cleanse yourself is through the law, statutes, and commandments. If y'all get what I'm saying. Con, con. So now, you know, under the, um, you know, under the laws of uh, the Bible, God's laws don't change. We're just under the order of Melchizedek, which means that, you know, all of us are doing priestly duties, you know, not just only the tribe of Levi, you know, so, and our Messiah is coming, our Messiah has come, I should say, and is on his way back for his return. So we also have to continue to go, you know, around and say, you know, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, cleanse your ways. Let's get that in, um, what's that, uh, Matthew 10 and 5? Because this, this is what Yahweh commanded his disciples. He didn't command them, you know, to dump people in water. He, he commanded them to go out and spread the word. Let's get that Matthew 10 and 5. Come, this is the book of Matthew, chapter 10 and verse 5. These 12, Hamashiach sent forth and commanded them, saying, They did what? Commanded them, saying, This is a commandment from Yahweh Shah. And you know, according to Deuteronomy 18 and 18, whatever Yahweh Shah says is law. So read that. Come, go not into the way of the Gentiles. And into any city of the Samaritans, into ye not. Read on. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Read on. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see that? It said, Preach, preach, saying. This is all dealing with words. It's all about spreading the word. Right? The, the ever-labor waters that we are baptized with, it comes from your belly. It's the words that you speak. That's how you wash people. You wash them through the word. Right? Let's get that in um, John 7 to 38. Um, this is the book of John, chapter 7, verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. You see that? Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. What? If you believe on what the scripture has said. Now that you believe the scripture, now you out there, and you could deliver the scripture. You know the scripture. You could deliver the scripture. You baptize other people with the scripture, which is the rivers of living water that's in your belly. Uh, I'm afraid I gave y'all some understanding. So we can start winding it down, y'all. Con, 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 con. All right, con. Yeah, I mean, you know, we already gave uh, Israel a few minutes to come up to ask questions. Um, we're going to go ahead and wind things down. Uh, again, to a everybody for tuning in. On Facebook, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel. All right. Um, that way when we have rooms like this, because if we get washed out like this moving forward, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to get on live uh, just to keep this work going. All right. Uh, also, if you're on YouTube and you haven't, um, make sure you download Clubhouse. OK. And uh, follow us there. All right. We have two platforms on there. 
uh, that you can follow. Um, you know, click on, you know, make sure you download it and uh, basically go to uh, HOI to the Cherries Fly uh, platforms platform. You can search it and make sure you follow us on there. Uh, also, the other platform that we have there, um, and this is all um, HOI affiliates, Crown of Thorns. Um, in the Crown of Thorns platform, we're usually there, usually in the morning, anytime from 8 o'clock, 8.30 and up uh, to the midday in the afternoon. All right. Uh, make sure you follow us on there. All right. We have other platforms that we work with on there, too. All right. So just make sure you follow us on there because we also uh, bring up this word. Uh, on also on that platform, all right? The whole point is just to get this gospel out here to wake up our people from their sleep, right? And do the work and the will of the Heavenly Father. Hopefully you guys got edified. And if you did, we did our job. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Hashim, Yahweh, Shai. Again, you know, Thwata for tuning in. Again, on the Facebook and the Clubhouse, YouTube, all the platforms, the different platforms, all right? But um, hey, uh, Kimuel, Shapa, y'all got anything else to uh, bring out before we shut things down? Okay, I just want to we ask for anybody uh, for yeah, those water baptism because it's customary. It's just not salvific. To receive salvation, you gotta get washed with the word, right? Have your uh, have your soul cleansed through the word of God. Khan, 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 all praises. I, I think Israel got it. But again, some people, again, you know, will have issues with certain points. But again, um, you know, the cleansing of your heart, like Shalpa said. But with that, all praises to the Most High. Again, Israel, remember, keep enduring to the end, Matthew 24, 13. All right. Keep striving for greatness. Stay in this truth. Don't let nothing take you away from this truth. All right. Uh, keep building yourself in the spirit with that on to the next one call me asha'ala israel remember we still got next shalom 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 youtube shalom all right